Hey everybody, how are we doing today? Jordan here with Farm Builder Channel, Farm Builder Entrepreneurs Group, and Farm Builder website. All kinds of farm building going on. You can check those places out, but what we're going to talk about today is solving one of the bigger problems you have when you have groups of pigs in the woods like this, or on pasture, big sows. How do you water them once they are too big to fit their fat head in a Brower drinker? You can either switch to the Rubbermaid trough, some other kind of trough, some kind of pan, which they will promptly turn into a swimming pool, a spa, or a toy to simply flip over once you're done filling it. What do you do that's not super expensive? Something we've been playing around with for the last two, three years now, have it simplified out to a build that we're ready to share with you guys, is what we call the Summer Sow Drinker. And this video will show you step-by-step step how to build one, and I'll go over the details of how it works here in just a minute. So hang tight, the wind's a little breezy, you might hear some whistling, but we have to deal with what Mother Nature gives us. That's part of being outdoors, isn't it? So let's get to it. This right here is what we are calling the Summer Sow Drinker. So if you've seen the video we have on the winter drinkers, you know how we build those and how those work. We still use those during freezing weather, but this is what we are now using for the rest of the time. Um, started fooling around with this design about three years ago. Got it dialed in pretty good last year. We built out maybe 15 of these units now, dozen 15, and have them out with all of our sow sets. This is a group of gilts here that we just put into the woods today. Came out of the field, and so they no longer have a brower drinker. They're now big girls, so they have a sow drinker. All right, basic tenets of it are you have an IBC tank. That is what's holding the water. You have a hole in the front. That is where the sows are getting to the water. There is a platform here that they must stand on to get the water. This keeps them from digging out the dirt here and making a wallow should the tank overflow. We always want them to be able to get their head in there and get a drink. Now, what's probably the most important element of this is the automatic float valve. You can see the line running up through the field there to the water system coming into the top and what we call the stem coming down through the tank and it is hanging there with a float valve set at the proper height so when this is full of water the water will be about two inches below the lip there so miss piggy like this one here she can come along oh how nice of you to model for me there girl and stick her head in there and get a drink of water the float valve and the stem are fairly loose it can bounce around that way if they push on it it will just push away and also we can adjust it up and down more as needed with that little black clip that you see up there. So we are using this from anywhere from 300 pound gilts all the way up to seven, 800 pound old sows and boars. This has worked fantastically. We have never had a pig get inside of it yet. And we've never had an issue of them tipping it over or otherwise causing it to spill. The only thing that occasionally will happen is they will pop one of these float valves off they'll break the little stem but it is coming in at such a slow rate that it's not a huge spill before we catch it with our twice a day feed and check so enough of this we'll get to the build show you how step by step to put this thing together talk here briefly about cost you're probably looking at less than two hundred dollars in cost for the tank the platform the various little parts that you'll see in the build and the hose. A lot of this will depend on your tank cost. Some places you can get these for free. Other places they're charging like 200 bucks for these things, which is ridiculous. And of course you got your pressure treated lumber, which is worth an arm and a leg right now. But generally in the ballpark of about $200 to build a sow drinker that will have you in business wherever your pigs are on the pasture and in the woods. That'll solve your problems of belly flopping, of water being there on those hot days. This has solved all of our problems for our uh, sows that we have out here in the woods. So let's get to it. All right, so let's go over the list of everything you'll need to build the drinker. Starting with, of course, your IBC tank or tote. These you should be able to find locally. If you just look on Marketplace or Craigslist, we do use the shorter ones for the drinker as they're a little bit cheaper than the tall ones. So that's the first thing that you need. Then we'll go over the uh, the list of everything else we got here um, so this is 125 feet of 3 8 inch air hose 
and I like to use the brand uh, Flexzilla. We switched over a few years ago to only using them for all of our hoses, and they are really awesome. They stay very flexible even in cold weather, take up a lot of abuse. The reason that we use an air hose, it is a lot cheaper than a garden hose by the foot. It's a lot less weight to carry around, and it can deliver the volume of water you need when you have a float valve that is continually filling, you know, re recharging your tank as opposed to a garden hose. So for all of our pig sets, this is what we are using. Of course, you got the cap for the, uh, the IBC tote, and uh, we'll show you what to do with that here in a little bit. Here are some of the plumbing fittings we have. So we have a 26 inch piece here of uh, three quarter PVC. And the fittings that you'll need for the end of this are half inch um, female threaded. So you got a straight one here and you've got a 90 degree. You have a uh, barbed fitting that will go in the one end of your air hose and plug into um, the elbow. And of course, this is your brass 3 8 barb to garden hose, which will allow you to plug into your water system. Uh, two clamps for the air hose. This is the float valve that will go on the bottom of the stem. So there's a couple ways you can go with this. You can get really expensive float valves, um, like the Hudson ones that are about 35 bucks a piece, which are completely awesome, but they're 35 bucks a piece. We use these, which are like 350, and typically the sows will break this at some point in the year, so we just keep extras on hand to, uh, to replace them. But you can find these on Amazon. This clamp right here, you'll see when we go out into the field, is part of adjusting the uh, water elevation in our tank that we will use um, on the top of the stem where it comes out the top. Um, some other things that are here, so this is a chain that will be used to hold up our platform. Chain links, these are chains that will attach the platform to the tank itself. Some extra zip ties that are used to secure the opening. These two uh, quarter inch by four inch bolts are used to secure this which is a two inch piece of PVC that will be used as our uh, splash guard slash edge guard where the animals stick their head in to drink. So it keeps them from cutting themselves on the metal and also gives it a, a point where they can't chew on the, the plastic. Here's what the, uh, the expensive stuff now, pressure treated lumber. This stuff will cost you your life savings, but uh, we've got um, two, pieces of two by six, four feet long. Down here, two pieces of two by eight that are four feet long. And those will make up the deck of our platform. One piece of four by four, four feet long. And two pieces of four by four that are two feet long. And you'll see how we put those together. And of course, for any kind of project, it's good to have a diversity of screws and fasteners and other tools that you can use. So what we'll use here is a screw, um, a screw chest here that was put together that has all the different kinds of screws that we use on the farm. So we'll use a collection of these for building the platform and for other things. So if you don't have something like this, it's definitely worth putting something like this together for your farm. So the first thing that we're gonna do is mark and cut out the parts of the metal grid that we don't need for our tank. And so what we're gonna do is come up to this second bar uh, well, actually, third one, if you count down there, but two open squares. So this about this high, about 20 inches off the ground. And this is where we will cut out our hole for the sows to stick their heads in. So I'll just mark for you guys uh, where we would make a cut with a grinder. So we're going to cut these two middle ones here, one here, and then these two up here. Again, over here, just for this one. And there we go. So that's all that you need to cut out is just that piece. And all right, so what we're going to do now is just mark the uh, edges of the tank here with a Sharpie. And we used to take the tank out to cut the uh, plastic away, but we've gotten it to the point where uh, that's not necessary and just can cut it in place. So roughly just mark out the lines here on all four sides. Now when we get to this bottom 
piece here, we actually are gonna leave about an inch and a half to two inches on here. So I'm just gonna roughly mark it here. And then um, you can either just hold it like this and scoot across or get an actual ruler and do it the right way. But we're gonna leave this little flap of extra plastic here. What works really well to cut the plastic out is heat. Just a regular razor knife or a pocket knife if it's sharp. And so you just heat along the plastic uh, as we cut. So remember, we're gonna leave this flap here on the bottom. So we're not gonna cut that off. sides out here and now we're just going to cut the top part of this flap but then also down the sides uh, of our side cuts all the way. Right. That piece we don't need. But cut these sides down and maybe cut a little bit chunk out. Help it fold over a little bit better. Next thing we're going to do is install our two inch PVC um, neck bar for the piggies over top of this plastic and this bar here. So this distance is usually about 19 inches, but you'll want to measure it to make sure because every tank's a little bit different. And as you'll see next, we're also going to cut a groove out of this so it'll slip over everything here. So I have it marked at 17 and a quarter and uh, cut this pipe down to size and then we'll cut the strip out of it. Again, safety first everybody. So we want to cut about a one inch strip out of this. So you set your fence, so you're roughly about halfway through and then you are gonna kinda have to eyeball it and just run it straight through to cut out your strip. First one will pinch a little bit at the end, so you gotta kinda get it through there quickly, but they will cut PVC without any problems. Safety first. All right, just like that. We've got our groove, we can now attach it to the tank. So let's go do that. Okay, something I did off camera was drill a hole here and here, and these will be used to attach this initially with some self-tapping screws to the top. So remember that little step. But we're also gonna uh, first heat this up, bend it over, get this on, attach it down, and then install the bolts. That's pretty good. This bad boy on. Precision. That's what we go for. All right, so we got it on here. Just get it tapped in to sink it down. got that set again this is where your salads are going to come in and out drinking so this is going to get a lot of wear from their necks going in and out that's why you want to have something pretty solid here uh, and pretty well connected so get the bolts in what we'll also do is put uh, some holes here zip tie these to the side just to hold them secure and we'll be done with our access port for the drinker
All right, we're about halfway through, eh, less than halfway through with the build, but we're done with the hard part, which is attaching that bar to the bottom. Now is the fun stuff of putting together the stem and building the platform, then we're done. Um, so you have a three quarter inch piece of PVC, 26 inches long. If you are using these shorter, what I call five bar or you know, five square type of drinkers, you might need to measure if you're using something else. And what we will do, is take this cap first, put it back on the tank, screw it in tight, and what I wanna find is where the back part of it is, because that's where we're gonna put our hole through for it. So that's actually right on the uh, right on the stamp here for it, so that makes it kind of easy to, uh, to identify. And we've got a hole saw here, ready to go. One inch, so I'm just gonna drill that spot out on the back of the lid. And then we'll start to put the stem together. So, got our glue. Where's my glue? Back with the glue. Uh, we'll start putting this together. Now remember, don't screw the two ends together because your pipe's still gotta go through there, okay? So, first thing we'll do is, you can start bottom top, doesn't matter to you, whatever your preference is. One side, some glue on. So this will be the bottom here, like that. Flow valve assembly. Remember, it's a couple bucks on Amazon. Probably put together a list of uh, these components that are purchasable online and uh, have them in the down part of the video here where you can click on those. But it's just any standard um, you know, fish tank float valve or small pond float valve is what you're looking for. Half inch thread. I'm just switching around the, uh, the set nut here on it. And then we'll put that onto our Fitting. Go, little buddy. Just like that. All right, so this is where you can't screw it up. No do-overs because the lid is what's holding the stem in place. You got to make sure you put it through before you put the other pieces on, which is now the 90 degree. So a little bit more glue. Pop that bad boy on there. All right, so that part of it's set. And then you can thread in barbed fitting, which is what the air hose will go on, grab a pair of pliers, tighten this up, and this part of our stem build is done. Oh, stick it in there. Make sure everything's going to work together. You want to thread this cap on, and voila. This is to the back of our area. The sows are drinking from up here on this side. So we'll grab this, and you can see this is hanging down here more than halfway back so it's going to fill back here where the sows can't mess with it now this is where this little mamba jamba comes in say you are on the side of a hill somewhere where your tank is tipped back and uh, you need more water in it for it to be full up to here where your sows are that is where you can just pull up the stem however high you need it and just set that on, and it's a little manual adjustment that allows you to uh, set your stem higher. Of course, you have this little set screw here that you can adjust your little floaty with as well. So you kind of have a, a micro adjuster here and a macro adjuster up there. So we got our air hose here. Looked, uh, stem already assembled, so we'll just get this connected up and be done with this part of it. Remember, you got your brass creates our garden hose side. So we'll just connect that up. Again, if you uh, weren't taking notes before, this is 125 feet of 3 8 air hose. You can find this stuff on Amazon in 250 foot rolls, which is how we do it. And then just drag it out halfway back. So you have roughly 125 per, per side. And uh, you're in business. Of course, you can make it as short or as long as you want. It's just about having enough hose to get back to your main trunk line and out to where your pigs are. We have our water line that has a uh, valve every 150 feet, so we found 125 works really well to 
get us to pretty much any paddock where we're going to have saddles. So the reason that we use, uh, another reason, we talked before about cost and weight and all that, but another reason I like to use hoses and plastics for a lot of what we do is it has a little bit of give when it freezes. So like this air hose handles freezing very well. I've never had one of these Flexilla hoses um, pop from freezing. After repeated abuse and driving over, you know, we'll have some that wear through, but never gone out there and seen one spraying because of freezing. But also, should it freeze hard, the plastic gives it somewhere to break that hopefully is not your most expensive components. You could do a brass fitting here, but by having it plastic, if it's gonna break, it's gonna pop that thing right here where the bar goes into the, the collar. I'd rather have it do that and replace a 50 cent plastic piece than pop a, uh, was three, four dollars last week, it's probably like 25 now, brass, brass fitting. So you get the drift. Have durability, uh, flexibility, and adaptability to all of the components that you're using for your farm builds. All right, so remember when you're building these things, it's for pigs. Pigs really don't care about a lot of things. So you can as overthink or underdo your builds as you want. You can get a speed square out and square it all up. Or if you've got a good eye for this stuff, just lay it out and just go with it. Pretty square, pretty good, we'll just roll with it. We're putting two of these in each one. And we are going to come back and put in a heavier lag. Because remember, this is the platform that your uh, 700 pound pigs are going to be dancing on several times a day each. We're going to use some heavy, heavier, um, I don't know what would these be, uh, 3 sixteenths kind of deck lags. They come out with something new every couple years at Lowe's, but we're going to throw one of these in each board, a few across the front. We want this thing to be very well secured. This gets a lot of abuse. well we'll throw a couple screws in the side just to secure these four by fours together and then just drill the holes in the back corner this thing will be ready to attach One thing I didn't show you guys is we put a, one of those lag screws in here, which you'll see later that helps hold it up when we're moving it. So we just throw this thing out in front. Just kind of eyeball up your center. And then uh, what we're doing is attaching the chains to it. It'll act as a hinge 
and a, uh, a leash to keep it here with the tank. Cold weather today, so tanks are cranky. This is a uh, inch and a quarter hole here. You can bore it with a speed bore or your hole saw, whatever you got. All right, push that puppy in and a connecting link. If I had three hands, this would be great. Stay. All right, so then you're just gonna put these together, connect up your chain, and cinch down your connecting link. All right. So we'll do it on both sides and we'll show you how we can secure this thing up against the tank when we go to transport and we'll be done with this thing. Last thing we gotta do before we launch this puppy into the world is attach this chain just up here. And this is just using a light chain, uh, you know, dog chain or whatever. Um, just crimp this back down to itself. This is not holding weight that often. And then what this will allow us to do is pick up the platform when we need to move it. And then we can just measure here roughly how far to our bolt. We'll cut this, uh, we'll cut this link off so it'll have a little bit of an end on it, kind of like you see here. And that will allow us to hook it up and hold this secure while in transport. And our build is complete. Sarah's bringing the tractor up here. We'll grab this thing and head out to the field and uh, show you guys how we set it in the paddock, hook it up, and see what these pigs think about it. Usually it takes them maybe a day to figure out that they gotta put their head in the hole if they want a drink. They'll check it out and nose around, and with about a day training, they're good to go.
here we are out at this new set of sows. So they just started getting bred maybe three weeks ago. Got a few visitors here. They would really like some of the peanuts out of that. They cannot have them. And Sarah's coming up here with the drinker. Just push down the fence for her. And she'll set it in there. So it truly is one of the nice things about this is we're able to move it around with the tractor or the skid steer, either full of water or empty. Alright, so we got Sarah and Lizzie here setting up the drinker, run the hose out of the paddock, and we'll go connect to the water line over there. And then we'll uh, we'll get it filling, and we'll should be good to go. There you see, they're already checking it out. What's all this? What's all this? Come back and check on it a little bit when it's full. Make sure everything's calibrated right. We'll be set. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed that build video. Hopefully, it was helpful to you. I'm going to try to put together either a Google Drive document that will have a parts list from Amazon for everything that you need. If I can build out an Amazon list and share just that, it'll be in the video uh, description below, as those famous YouTubers would say. Thanks so much for hanging around, and let me know if this works well for you on your farm. Love to see these uh, devices being used on farms all across the country. And I love seeing people having solutions to their problems that aren't super expensive and that actually efficiently solve doing these kind of things at scale on your farm. Thanks for hanging out. We'll catch you next time. Check out another video. Check out the website farmbuilder.us. We have a list there of upcoming schools and events for whenever you're watching this video, whether it is 2021 or 2031. Until then, we'll see you around and get after it.